The 7 PRCW F-Class rifle is done and in this video we're going to take it out and shoot it. Gavin Gu here from UltimateReloader.com. This has been one of the most fun rifle builds yet. My friend and F-Class shooting mentor Eric Cortina has been super helpful putting this project together. We've already had two parts in this series that you're going to want to check out. In part one, I talked about the new Wooks Titano chassis. Uh, did the chambering job on the barrel. This is a Brux inch and a quarter straight profile. Uh, took it to the lathe, did the chambering, talked about 7 PRCW, which is essentially a necked up 6.5 PRC. Why that's winning F-Class matches, why I wanted to build this rifle. Then in part two, I did the complete machining process for installing the EC Tuner V2. This is gonna allow me to fine tune my load for differing conditions, that sort of thing. This is an amazing rifle. In this video, we're gonna talk about bedding the action to the chassis, some of the other parts and pieces, final assembly and break-in. Okay, so that takes us to Bedding the action to the stock. Now, I've used a number of products for bedding, and I haven't been completely happy with any of them. I was using DevCon Aluminum Liquid most recently, and my complaint was it's too thin. It's not viscous enough. It's not thick enough. It would just kind of run to the bottom and kind of didn't behave how I wanted it to behave, and I'd seen other people bed rifles with thicker materials like DevCon Plastic Steel Putty. This is the 10110 product. It's a nine by one by weight mix. It's got a good working time and its consistency is like that of peanut butter. So it's not gonna run down into the bottom like a pool of liquid and cause some of the complications that you'll have with some of the other products. So the DevCon was mixed. Uh, I used Carnuba wa Car Wax as a release agent this time. Normally I use Hornady One Shot Spray. So I'm trying a different bedding compound and a different release agent, kind of funny. Um, and with this stock, it's really easy to bed because you've got the rear tang area and then you've got the area right behind the recoil lug. So just kind of two, two areas there. Uh, I hit the action screws really good with the Carnuba Wax to make sure that they wouldn't stick. I didn't have the barrel on at the time, which doesn't matter. Uh, coated those two areas well with the DevCon plastic steel putty, pressed the action into place, put the action screws in, and tightened them until I could just feel them start to tighten a little bit and then back them off, right? It's really important that you don't have any stress in the action, and I had zero stress in this action during the bedding process. Okay, let it sit overnight. Next morning, uh, popped the action out of the stock, popped out just fine, looked amazing. Just like two mirror concave surfaces that, that sort of dark gray color, and it cleaned up real easy on the milling machine. I did a little bit of profiling, and then I uh, used an end mill to drill out the action screw holes uh, to their appropriate diameter, basically what they were before I did the bedding job. So that worked really well. I installed the barrel with the SAC Bravo barrel vise. Really like this Bravo, Bravo vise. It's got multiple inserts. This is for inch and a quarter, so I put those inserts on, put some drywall tape around the barrel, uh, got that tightened down. After I torqued the barrel on, I took it over to the laser engraver and engraved all of the barrel details. Ultimate reloader, 7 PRCW, one and nine, 32 inches overall length. Okay, at this point, it's pretty exciting. Now we're ready to look at the bottom metal. So I reached out to Hawkins and I said, hey, I got this Wooks Titano stock. It's got a BDL bottom metal inlet. What can we do? Because Hawkins is my go-to bottom metal. Super high quality. You've seen it on a bunch of different builds, including for use with the Hunter mags, for traditional AICS mags, that kind of thing. And Nick over there at Hawkins said, try the Oberndorf bottom metal uh, for BDL. And so this is important because this stock is actually set up so that you could magazine feed this. And I chose a special variant of the BAT VR, which is a solid bottom kind of custom option for that. So basically 
this is for the action screws to plug up the bottom and also to serve as a trigger guard. So uh, that worked out really well. And when I tightened the action screws, everything pulled together. And what I check for is when the action screw bottoms out, I want it to just get tight right away. I don't want it to suck together and slowly tighten. That means you don't have a, a good bedding situation. Also, I'll put my hand around the fore end when I'm tightening the front action screw and, and check for movement. And I did not feel that. Everything you know, sucks together really tightly, really solidly, which is exactly what I want to see. Uh, the last detail was to uh, take the laser engraver and mark a dash here where I'm going to keep track of my EC Tuner V2 setting. Uh, I installed this scope. This is a scope that I used on uh, another rifle that I had built previously. I'm trying to remember which one that was. <laughs> I don't even remember. I think it was the 300 PRC that it was on initially. Yeah. This is a Striker HD, so it goes all the way from 5 to 50. So it, it has 10x the magnification range from its wide setting to its tight setting. And uh, I like to use that for, uh, you know, precision shooting from the bench. And this is a rig that's used for F-class shooting. So I thought that would come together well. And uh, really uh, happy with how everything came together. So uh, in terms of the side in load, I had a couple different types of brass I was trying. I had ADG brass that I just picked up at the SHOT Show literally last week. And that is like native 7PRCW brass, which is cool. Uh, Eric Cortina uses Lapua 6.5PRC brass, which I've got in the boxes here. And he runs a mandrel in it to neck it up to 7mm. We're using the winning bullets, which are the Burger 180 grain hybrid target bullets, uh, it just seems like across the board people are saying, "Yeah, this is this is the winning combo." And Vitivori N555 and Federal 210M match primers. That's a standard large rifle primer non-magnum. Cartridge overall length was 3.130 inches, and it all went together super smooth. Um, this is the fire forming load. Uh, I did use a bench tool to do my sight in, the Bushnell tool. So I was really excited. I used my Sinclair front rest and a protector model leather rear bag, got everything lined up and pulled the trigger. So I've gotten spoiled recently. I traditionally shoot with brakes or with suppressors. This baby has a little bit of recoil, which is not bad. You just have to be very conscious of not anticipating the recoil. And I was very delighted to see for a Magnum rifle, uh, the first three shots went into 0.271 MOA, which is 0.2845 inches. That's with no load development, only the load data that Eric Cortina had shared with me no tuner adjustment, nothing. Uh, for the first 15 shots, we had an average velocity of 2,826 feet per second and an SD of 9.5 feet per second. What does that mean? That means that we've already got a really good load to start with. And what does that mean? Like, what's next? So, what I'm going to do is fire form more brass. I'm going to do a lot more of this uh, lap hook, get it fire formed, and then I'm going to play with the load a little bit. I'm going to look at bullet seating depth and look at what that does to my group sizes and also monitor velocity and SD. And then I will also, I'm going to talk to Eric about his strategy on using the, the tuner because I know a lot of competitors will get a good baseline loan and then maybe based on the atmospheric condition changes or, or whatever, they'll tune their load with the, the tuner to, to suit. Uh, it's a game, right? And I'm not up to speed with the F-Class game. I'm also going to talk to F-Class John and Eric Cortina about shooting technique. I was shooting off of a bench. It's actually not the best bench. That wood top is not good. If you go like this, you're going to see that reticle bouncing, right? And that is not what you want. So one of the things that we're going to do is we're going to upgrade all of our shooting bench tops to concrete. We have a fairly thin concrete bench uh, up at the ridgeline range. 
the ridgeline range can be difficult because you're likely to get a lot more wind there. And then also during the day, you can get a ton of mirage, especially in the non-winter seasons. So ultimately, I want to take our mid-mountain range, which is the more protected range, upgrade it with the concrete bench. That'd be great. Okay, but that's not how you shoot F-class. You shoot class, it's basically belly bench rest, right? Laying down and using uh, a front rest, maybe something like a Seb with a joystick and a rear bag, and that's gonna involve some learning, right? How to drive the rifle, right? Are we free recoiling? Are we pushing our shoulder into it? What's the, you know, the, the technique? Um, I know that very slight differences in technique can have a drastic effect on the outcome. Uh, but really, I think the biggest learning will be the wind game, right? If we're shooting 600 yards or 1,000 yards in an F-class match, uh, the person that can read the wind is, is the person that's uh, going to have the upper hand, right? So I definitely have some learning to do there. And, you know, we shoot over canyons, and I really want to learn uh, some of the more traditional type of, of ranges, that sort of thing. So uh, that's a little bit about what I have planned. Very, very happy with this rifle. This is my first time chambering a Brux barrel blank. I've used a lot of the other ones. This is the first Brux. Wook's Titano chassis is absolutely awesome. Bat VR solid bottom is definitely a winner here. I'm super happy with this rifle. I can't wait to shoot it more. And with a little bit more shooting practice and a bit more load development, it'll be really interesting to see what will happen. I think this thing is an absolute winner. It's an absolute tack driver. So just hours ago, I shot the rifle for the first time. I'm super, super happy. What I'd like to know is, what do you think of this build? What do you think of the results that I've gotten so far? Are you shooting F-Class? If so, what kind of rifle are you shooting? What stock, what action, what barrel, what cartridge? What's working for you and what isn't? Drop that comment and we'll start a discussion. Thank you for watching. Watch out for the follow-up stories. That concludes this video and that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, we're on Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, where we've got unrestricted content and Instagram. Make sure to follow us on all those channels. Ultimate Reloader also has a commercial solutions division serving law enforcement, the military, and the gun industry. We have some unique capabilities, including a comprehensive suite of recoil testing and evaluation capabilities, trigger profiling, and more. If you're interested in custom rifles like what we build here on the channel or gunsmithing services, you're going to want to go to rifles.ultimatereloader.com and get on the wait list. If you want to learn lucrative gunsmithing like what I show here on the channel, including building custom rifles and Cerakote plus a whole bunch more, you're going to want to check out the Colorado School of Trades, schooloftrades.edu. Thanks again for watching.